Hello again from Normandy. I wanted to be uploading the second part of my Chicks in Cold Weather film, but something happened and I've been prevented from doing that, but it will be coming out within the next couple of days. In the meantime, however, I've been presented with a case and I think it will be a good idea to film it because it's something unusual. Unusual in the sense it's very much is at the core of what I believe about illness and that is that we should look at it holistically not just look at the disease or the condition or the injury but that we should look at the whole bird and that's why I've got a site called the Holistic Hen which I hope you'll go and take a look at as well. So this is the situation it's my head cockerel he is the leader not only of his particular flock but he's also a dominant cockerel in the whole garden and he's not very well and he's not very well because he's got conjunctivitis and stupidly we had the same issue with a hen about five or six years ago now I can't remember exactly but I will show you the film so we'll know from that and that was my hen called Clementina and the reason she got it was one she was in a slightly nervous state and secondly, she was sitting on, roosting at night on a perch in one of the outbuildings, which is near to the door. Now, normally she faced inwards to the house, but she'd started facing outwards and she, she was in a terrible draft. And I did think of taking that perch down, but after that, other roosters and hens used to perch on it and they would face, perch facing the other way. So it was a favourite perch, so I left it. He's been perching on it and he's come across with the same problems of conjunctivitis. But that's not really what I'm interested in talking about. What I want to talk about is depression. And it's something that happens in birds. I've seen it happen a lot with bereavement when they've lost a very close friend. They've lost a, a partner or they've lost a brother or sister and they are very badly affected by it, causes them a lot of stress and it makes, makes them either get another condition or in his case, could make the condition worse. So although I'm already treating him with homeopathic medicine, as I was doing with uh, the hen, I'm also giving him a lot more personal attention because Clementina very quickly got over it and she had, she's uh, out in the garden and laying eggs very shortly afterwards. But he, he's okay, but I have to keep giving him a bit of a hug. His name, <laughs> believe it or not, is Captain Snuggles. And that seems like a silly name for a dominant rooster, but the reason is because actually he's not that friendly. He's very independent. But at night, when I pick him up to put him on the perch, he always gives me a big snuggle. So I knew that he really does respond well to affection. It might be a bit horrible to be stroking a snotty rooster, but I don't care. I don't care. He's fine. So all he's got at the moment, he's got a swollen face. But the first few days he had it, he was quite depressed. That's how I found he was ill, because I saw him in the garden just sitting there, or rather standing there, very hunched, and that's not like him at all. Normally he's very, very cocky. He, he walks about as if he owns the place, and it was very, very symptomatic that he was not well to see him like that. And his reason, apart from being on the perch, um, getting, some, getting his eyes... Um, being filled up because he's detoxing and then probably scratching them with his feet and putting bacteria into his eyes and causing a problem. He's in the malt. You can see that he hasn't got his sickle feathers yet. He's coming back out of that malt, but it's not complete. And for him, as the lead co cockle, these sickles are an emblem of his, what should we say, masculinity, of him being dominant. And because he hasn't got them properly at the moment, that makes him feel bad about himself. I've seen that over and over again with cockles. So he needs to be supported. He's, he's in the house with us. He's got his own little box. I'm feeding him all the time because his eyes are stuck up a lot of the time and he has swollen eyes so he can't see. So he's getting a lot of individual attention. I think the problem is that it's painful or gritty probably for him to have his eye open. So if he can still <laughs> find his food. Oh, yeah, come on. I still can. Yeah, check. I know, I know. If he can still find his food without having to open his eyes, 
and he's happy with that. He keeps falling asleep. Come on, dear. Come on. He just needs to hear where it is, really. Once he's got a rhythm going, he's fine. It's better for him to eat on his own. It gives him more confidence. But I do hold it for him right up to his face now and again and then he can really get going but I like to allow him come on come on chick come on baby come on that's it that's it that's it well done good boy he's had quite a lot to eat already and I've made him this uh, bed box, this little box for him to sleep in and he knows when he's going to go and have a rest and have a sleep because it's got crunchy leaves in it so he can feel and hear the crunchy leaves he knows it's bedtime then and I usually put him upstairs against the stained glass window which I think is if you can see any of the light it's a nice light that comes through it's a nice calming light and then he usually goes to sleep quite quickly and this has helped him a lot because in the past couple of days he's begun to exhibit signs which tell me that he's fine and that is he's begun to do his feathers he's talking to me you're talking to me are you are you okay yeah, okay he's a bit squeaky but he's talking to me and he's eating well but i have to obviously show him where the food is and that that bond between me and him now is helping him along okay it's labor intensive but if you care about your birds and your animals you're going to do it but I thought that was a very important thing to talk about because often people think, oh, you're giving a human persona to an animal. Well, you know, we've all got problems emotionally when things happen to us and we shouldn't see that that isn't affecting our birds. And it also affects how well we can um, get a cure to them, to get them better. Because if they're feeling depressed, they're going to be stressed and they're going to be producing toxins in their system, which are going to also add to the load of whatever else is wrong with them so this is just a short film to talk about that thank you for watching and as i say i will get the part two of the chicks in cold weather out shortly i'm trying now to produce one film at least a week maybe also an article as well if i can i need to get my viewing figures back up um, because my major film duckling disaster hatch which is one that has been keeping my figures up, um, is now not being promoted as much. So we're going down a bit. But I want to get my films out anyway. I get such great comments. They are incredibly uplifting. So from me and Captain Snuggles, thanks again for watching. <laughs>